Good afternoon. Welcome to the Midday Mall for Friday the 9th of September. I think uh, we probably are all uh, thinking about the death of Queen Elizabeth and what that might mean and how it affects us and uh, the significance of it. And on the one hand, it, it doesn't change anything. I was struck by a news report where they said the Queen has died and it almost without taking a breath it continued uh, King Charles III and the Queen Consort will stay in Balmoral for uh, two days and then go to London. Uh, life goes on, the monarchy goes on, <laughs> the society goes on, nothing has changed. And yet at the same time there's a, a real sense that, that this marks the end of an era. And when one thinks of all that she's been through and what she's seen in her reign as Queen, um, and over 70 years, the, the, the changes that have come about in her nation and in the world, are quite remarkable. Uh, one of the comments was that she'd um, had to work with 15 prime ministers and she's worked um, or met 14 American presidents uh, and she's been on the throne for that entire time. And that's uh, quite remarkable that she started off with uh, Winston Churchill and Eisenhower and ends up with Liz Truss and uh, Joe Biden and you think of all that's gone in between. And today, the two readings that Robert Murray McShane has us read both have a, a slight link to royalty. The, uh, the first one is from Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 12, and this is a judgment on the people of Israel, and Ezekiel says part of the judgment will be, in verse 12, the prince among them will put his things on his shoulder at dusk and leave, and a hole will, will be dug in the wall for him to go through. He will cover his face so that he cannot see the land. I will spread my net for him, and he will be caught in my snare. I will bring him to Babylonia, the land of the Chaldeans, but he will not see it, and there he will die. And that is exactly what happened. King Zedekiah was captured. Um, his sons were executed in front of him, and then his eyes were gouged out, and he was then taken to Babylon, part of judgment on a wicked kingship. When he's introduced, we're told that he became king and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. He had not sought to align himself with God and his will and therefore became part of the problem of Israel where they had turned away from God. And then as a stark contrast to that, the second reading we have is Psalm 51, a Psalm of David. And the, the, uh, soup, uh, the, the title says it's a Psalm of David when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. So it points to the time when David had failed. And his response was, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. And how was somebody, when he got it wrong, repented and turned back to God. And I think Queen Elizabeth walked closer to the line that David took than Zedekiah. And for that we're thankful. And we pray that all leaders, all Christian leaders, all leaders in the world would walk in a similar way. And even though we're not leading, we too should make sure that we walk close to God, listen to his word, and shape our lives accordingly. Do this and you will be blessed.